No, I mean, the only thing I have is what what we put out approximately two weeks. Hopefully, um, it's not much longer, but we, we won't, we don't know. It's, I mean, it's, that's just a, the best guess that we can do, but it's, I haven't seen them today, um, but, you know, hopefully it's no more than two weeks. And, and he, he missed the game with the calf and then I believe he was questionable and then he comes back and, and he hurts it. Should, did he come back too soon? Uh, what, because obviously that's, that's related. What, what is the story there? Yeah. I mean, you can put the two and two together, but uh, that wasn't the case. I mean, he, he had a couple of days, felt great. Um, played on it, felt great. That day felt great. Uh, like I said, you can't control it. It's just things, things happen. Uh, but he was feeling good. Um, we wouldn't, I mean, we wouldn't have put him out there if he did not feel a hundred percent. I mean, those are, those are always tricky injuries. You can feel great or like he did. And, and then it happens again, but, um, we hope that he's back in a couple of weeks. We're, we're going to, we're definitely going to miss his, his shooting. Um, even when he doesn't shoot the ball, he draws a lot of attention and we could do a lot of stuff that other guys can get opportunities when he's in the game, but next man up Bonga is going to get some opportunities uh, and might be another guy or two that has to be ready. Ava. Thanks. Um, Scott, what were you guys able to get done in practice today, assuming that all the, I guess, normal high minutes guys who, who get those in games were not practicing? Is that right? Yeah, I mean, the uh, only guys that did not practice, obviously, was DB, uh, Thomas Bryant, uh, Russell, uh, and Brad did probably 65, 70% of the practice, uh, did not do the, the half court scrimmage. Uh, and then how did the same thing just, uh, from his, just from his ribs, we just, anytime we can get him off the court that just another day of rest on that rib is good, but he did some, he did some of the stuff that wasn't contact, but everybody else did it. Rui, Rui probably did 80, 80% of the practice and everybody else did the entire practice. And just what were you guys working on ahead of the kind of New York swing here? Yeah, we well just um, our offensive um, spacing and cutting and and getting to the proper spots and being disciplined in our corner fills and uh, good passing. Uh, just we want to take care of the basketball. When we give ourselves a chance to score, we we always you know you we're able to we're able to get to the paint and kick out for good shots. And then defensively, just to, just to continue to work on our half court and get our reads and be physical that it would that's what we did we just did some shooting some warm-ups uh, some defensive work some offensive work and then we did a, a half court five on five uh, ten possessions each um, scrimmage um Scott I also wanted to ask we've asked you quite a bit this season about what it's like uh, communicating with guys on road trips since you guys don't get to see each other like normal and anything I'm wondering if you guys as a coaching staff has have kind of learned anything about how important it is that you, I don't know if it's like getting guys on group texts or anything like that. I think Brad was telling us during the West Coast road trip that the most he interacts with his teammates is when they're playing video games. I know you're not a, a video game person, so I was wondering how you kind of <laughs> do that. Yeah, I mean, I gave up video games a while back. I think I was in the eighth grade. I My last video game was probably... Pong. Um, I, I mean, the players, it's, this is the, this is the difficult part. I mean, cause we're all, we're social. We all, we need contact with one another. And just from a coaching standpoint, just with our, our coaches, it's, it's sometimes it's rough. I mean, we see each other on, on the, on the zoom call and we're all on the same floor in the hotel. Uh, we try to some of the hotels that have big ballrooms. We try to go down there, and, but that's always weird. We got the five thousand square foot ballroom, and we got twenty tables in there, and one person per table. And I can barely hear the coach even say something. You know, that's 
40 yards away. Um, but to play, we just try to do it as best we can. It's not ideal, but the good thing about it, it's it's a level playing field. All 29 teams are in the same boat. Uh, but I, I do miss I do miss uh, a lot of things what we used to have, but you can't worry about that. But the, the communicating with the players is just through texting. Um, when we do have our breakfast meetings, it, it, we can have it with all the players, but not all the coaches. Um, so we're just we're just working with what we have. Neil. Hey, Scott, both from the eye test and also the numbers say that you guys are passing the ball a lot less this year compared to last year, you know, somewhat unsurprisingly. But would you like to see more ball movement uh, in the offense to try and supplement when Brad and Russ are not having super efficient nights shooting the ball themselves? Well, I mean, there's, there's, always, there's always room for improvement. I mean, last year we we didn't have uh, the dominating uh, point guard. We had we had to really move the ball and shift the defense side to side. Um, a lot of also that we haven't had a, a lot of practice time, so we're trying to keep things as simple as we can with some of our younger players. I think that's helped offensively. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we love the. Sometimes when you do pass the ball, you create more turnovers. So that's sometimes uh, it's not always good. Uh, but there's a there's a there's a sweet spot that we try to get to. Um, we have some quick hitters. We got a really really high level scorer in Brad. So there's a lot of times that you can do the same things that you need done with less moving and, and less passing. That he creates he creates a lot of difficult decisions for the defense. And the wear and tear on on ball movement with Brad is also. I mean, his, I don't know if you guys probably look at his miles per game and accelerations, decelerations. It's it's a lot. That it's a lot. But I mean, long story short, passing has been good. We want more passing, uh, but we want we just want good possessions, good shots. Whether it takes five shots, I mean, five passes or or one pass. The ones that we're trying to trying to eliminate is the no no pass shots early in the shot clock if it's not a transition you know attack Zach coach Brad speaking of him his uh efficiency is like despite your record like way up in the second half um even his free throws this season are way up from his career averages do you feel like you know that was like an evolution you expected uh, and uh, where, like, how do you even, how does he keep getting better? Like, what, how does he continue to, to find these areas to improve? Because at this point, you're, you're almost running out of things uh, to ask him to improve upon. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying his improvement over the years. It's just, it's great to see and fun to watch. Uh, but it's all, it's all, predicated on his effort and his work he's he, he's he's serious about the game and the thing that I love about him and Russell they're serious about the game they want to they want to get better themselves and they want our team to get better Russell is more demonstrative Brad is more reserved uh, but I don't really know the only thing that I I try to think of maybe we can you know he can get better on some post-up opportunities but he scores. He's, he scores in so many areas of the floor that it's hard for the defense to to load up because we, we kind of move him around, whether it's on the left side, right side, wing, baseline running, pin downs and transition, DHOs. He can do it all. He just the only thing he hasn't done is, is post ups. But you know maybe that's maybe that's this summer when he comes back and gets you know comes back and tweaks the game and improves the game a little bit, but. His free throws. I mean, I think I've always felt that he was a a high 80s and 90 free throw shooter, but it's good to see that all the work is put in and it's paying off. All right, we'll finish up with Ava. Being greedy today, Scott. Um, it it looks like to us that Rui and Russ have a pretty good line of communication there. Um, did you expect those guys with their two very different personalities to 
kind of hit it off, or maybe it's just for the cameras. I don't know if they're like enemies behind, you know, when we're not looking, but they yeah, seem to be pretty good. I separate them a lot in the locker room. I can't even put them next to each other. Um, no, they, you know what, this is the, I mean, I, I've seen it now for eight years and I've known for a while now with Russell, everybody thinks looking at Russell from the outside, you think that he's just a hot head and he's just, um, hard to deal with, but every teammate I've ever, uh, any, all of his teammates I've coached for the last eight years, love Russell Westbrook, love him. And because he wants them to, he wants them to, to ex, excel. He wants them to get better. He pushes them. There's no question. He's not easy on them, but he cares about them. And they know that Rui knows that Rui knows that Russell uh, wants the best for them. And, and Russell's going to push them every day, but they have a good, a good connection. Um, not, a, I mean, I don't know if it was good early on. I don't think it was bad. It was just, there's so many moving parts and the, the season came up so fast and not a lot of time to really figure things out and then COVID and all that, but I can really see a connection in the last, you know, two or three weeks that he's finding them and he's trusting them and he's helping them get in better spots on the floor and it's in this paying off. Rui is really blossoming into a good offensive or a good all around player. Thanks Scott. Thank you. Appreciate it guys. Oh man, sorry, Fred. Oh, Fred, come on. Ava only gets two today. I'm getting one in after the buzzer. We're in stoppage time now. All right. Um, no, I was. I wanted to ask you. Um, it, we've heard so much about how this year's scheduling wise and procedural wise has been different for the players in terms of game prep. How's it been different for the coaches? Like um, coaches meeting prep, all that kind of stuff. We don't get to meet as often, and because you. you you know, there's always, if you do, you have the closed rooms and you only have so many people in there. It's been hard. It's been hard to get connected and stay connected. I'm sure assistant coaches feel, some of them feel left out at times. And I mean, I, sometimes I feel bad that I can't get everybody um, in the same room or everybody on the same trip. Uh, you got to, you know, spread out the, spread out the, the numbers on the road and and it's definitely difficult, but like I said, the thing that helps all of us is that it, all 29 teams are going through the, 29 other teams are going through the, the same stuff. But we're trying, I try to do the best I can. I know sometimes that I fail, but I always try to think of ways to stay connected with our staff. Have you, have you seen any, uh, I'm not asking like as an excuse, because like you said, every team is going through this, but have you seen any tangible like almost league-wide effects because of that? Like anything that's changed within games or within, around the league because of those those things? No, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think with the technology, it's really helped. I mean, if this happened, you know, 10 years ago or even less, maybe, for sure 20 years ago, this would have been, it would have been really rough uh, to get players better with the, not a lot of practice time, but with technology, you can figure out ways to stay connected with staff and players. Do you guys look like just a different team against Utah than you did even just the, the previous night? What what do you think you, you guys did well in that game that you can carry over to future ones? Uh, I mean, I think obviously our defensive uh, intensity was there compared to the last four, four or five games before that. Um, you know, the, the help side was there, the weak side, you know, just the overall help defense was there. I mean, I think it's really, really hard to guard one-on-one -on -one in this league because uh, everybody can score, but our help side was really, really locked in. And that's that's really what we got to do every day, every game uh, to be able to put ourselves in the best position to win. Um, you know, it's weird. We've been very, very inconsistent. And it's very hard to be consistent in this league. Um, but if, if we want to put ourselves in the best position to win, then we got to have a team defense and not just the individual defensive game. And, and I'm curious, you, you and, and Davis are kind of like the shooters, you know, um, with, with him out, do you feel like there's any more pressure on you? Do you feel like you have to do anything differently in order to make up for uh, kind of his absence? No, I mean, I, I don't know if I'll get more shots or not. You know, that's not really in my mind. My mind really just stays the same. You know, my, 
I've said multiple times, my role never changes. You know, when I get my shots, I'll take them, hopefully knock them down and play my ass off on defense. You know, that's really never going to change on who's in and who's out. You know, whether I play five, 10 minutes or 30 minutes, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change. Thanks, Harrison. Appreciate you. Ava. Hey, Garrison. Um, I am just wondering, since you came from a part of this organization where obviously development was the focus and a premium and everything, and now you're kind of playing every other day and kind of having to make those adjustments on the fly. Um, what adjustment has that been like for you personally? Like, are there things that you feel like you've changed in your game or changed in your life because of the, the kind of drastic swing? Uh, I mean, definitely in my life, because we're not able to go anywhere. So I just sit on my couch all day if we're not playing. Uh, just gets boring, but you know, from a basketball standpoint, um, it is weird not practicing, and it's weird how how many game like back to backs we have, and then we have an off day, and then we're playing right again. It's it's tough that way, but I think I honestly kind of feel like the development I had last year um, helped me in that aspect because. There was a point in time where I was playing with the Wizards and the next night I played with the G League and the Wizards. And like, I, I think I remember I played seven games in eight days one time last year between the G League and the Wizards. So I think that kind of prepared me for this long stretch. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can only, you know, credit that to last year because that was a huge part of my development, being able to get used to my body, being able to get used to these long seasons and many games because we only played what we only have 30 games in college and and it's a huge jump from 30 to 82 now obviously 72 this year but um last year that really really helped prepare me mentally and physically for you know these back-to-backs and these every other day games so it's it's been tough but last year was a huge help for that all right, this is a silly question, but with the mental aspect of that, like, I guess from our point of view, it's obviously like you're just going out there and playing basketball. So what's the, the mental adjustment you have to make from making that crazy jump in 50 games or whatever from one year to the next? It's super, super hard. Um, just the fatigue, the body fatigue. And, you know, I'm a huge believer in, you know, your mind's a whole lot, well, your body's a whole lot stronger than you think it is. And when your mind's what you really got to, you know, I guess, talk into realizing that you can do it. I mean, yeah, I go into a back to back and I'm super tired, but, you know, mentally, I got to just try to snap out of that and realize that, you know, I'm going to be all right and just play as hard as I can, just like I did the night before. Um, so mentally, you really just got to try to fight through it because, um, you know, your body has a lot more power than you think it does. And you said you were sitting on your couch all day when you're not playing games. What do you, how do you stay busy on the road? Are you a video game guy like the rest of everybody? I usually take my Xbox with me. Fair enough. Zach. Harrison, what kind of impact has Russ had on you personally um, this season? And I guess it kind of goes hand in hand with what you were just talking to Ava about with, you know, staying ready, staying mentally tough. What, what kind of impact has he had on you? Uh, even, you know, it's funny. I've, before I even played with the guy, I watched him play a lot over his career and one thing I've always respected about him is his intensity and his fire and I've always said to multiple different people if you know a lot of these guys in the league had Russ's mentality they'd be even better than they were in intensity but he his his intensity is you know unmatched and I try to come in with that I'm not as vocal as he is but I try to match his intensity playing wise um and that's as contagious to a team. When you have a guy that plays that hard and is that loud, and gets on everybody like that, then it's contagious and it helps everybody, you know, kind of get out of that, you know, soft mindset in a sense, if that makes sense. But um, it's, it's contagious to the team and it helps us out a lot. Neil. Hey, Garrison, you told us before, you know, you didn't want to get complacent with yourself, even though you were in a starting role. What are some of the next areas that the coaching staff is hoping that you can uh, improve in? Uh, you know, I'd say most I've heard is obviously just being consistent. 
being in the right spots defensively. Um, you know, I'm, I've always played hard. That's not really been an issue. But, you know, just mentally thinking the game and being able to read things, I think that's offensively and defensively is where the next step I need to take, being able to know when to put it on the floor, when to shoot it. You know, I may not touch it 10, 15 possessions in a row, but not taking a quick one just because I touch it, but driving and kicking or whatever it may be. And uh, just learning, learning that type of thing and reading the game is probably the next step that I need to take. And Scott has told us that, you know, sometimes defensively you lock in, you know, a lot on one guy on maybe your primary matchup. But in today's NBA, you know, with all the switching that happens, you know, th that might be difficult. So I guess just what's the difficulty level and is it just an adjustment thing and just with time it will improve and experience? I think with time and experience it will improve because, you know, I've been, so, I'm, I've been such a blow up guy and I blow up screens and I run through screens and I try to run through people and that's that's just not like now our our coverage is to go under handoffs and I'm so used to blowing up handoffs and trying to get a, a deflection or whatever it may be it, it's just going to come take take time to adjust to that um, and I think I'm doing better with it but it still takes time and I still make mistakes um, just being conscious about when to blow up and when not to um, so I think yeah I think over time and experience it'll, it'll be better.